balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. There is no situation that God cannot handle. No matter what you're facing today or what you'll face tomorrow or any time, there is no situation that God cannot heal. I want to give a shout out to all of my friends who are online today and your families. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. I'm excited about the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm excited about what he's doing in my life. I'm excited about what he's doing in your life. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Roll all of your cares over unto the Lord and worship him. I say roll all of your cares over over to the Lord and worship him. God's got a blessing for you today. He's got a message that's going to set you free. He's got a message that will show you how to get your loved ones set free. Even if you're in bondage, if you have a habit, you've got something in your life that should not be, God will show you how to get set free. If you want it, come and get it. If you want it, come and get it. The Lord is in his holy temple. We give praise and glory and honor to God. I want to thank God. I want to praise God. I want to thank God for Dustina and Mike and Destiny and and uh, Nikki and Nathan, as they brought the service to you last week, they did a mighty good job. We want to give a shout out to the Rainville family, uh, to the Branham family. We want to give a shout out. They did a mighty job. Dustina, we are so proud of you and your family. And Nathan, you brought the word. And Dustina, you brought the word. And we're going to hear from you again in the very near future. Praise God. So we want Nathan to get another sermon together. Dustin to get another sermon together. We praise God. We thank God. And some of you, many of you, all of you can be guest ministers on this program. You don't have to be ordained. If you have a word, you want to share a word with the people, we can make it happen because we're family. We're family and we're raising up a family to worship the Lord. Amen. Welcome to the online church. This is not your traditional church. It's the online church. We are not separate from the mainstream brick and mortar church. We're part of the body of Christ. And what we do is to reach out we're reaching out to the sick and the shut-ins. We're reaching out to people who don't have a church to attend. We're reaching out where people are hurting. We're reaching out to that 80% in America alone who do not attend church. We're reaching out. We're knocking on your door, letting you know that God loves you. And even though you might not be going to church, we'll bring the church to you so that you can worship God. We're reaching out. Ladies and gentlemen, we are standing in the gap like Ezekiel. We are standing in the gap for this nation and for the nations. We're reaching out to people in foreign nations who watch the, these videos, these uh recordings. We're reaching out in the name of Jesus to let you know that God loves you. God loves you no matter who you are, no matter what you've done. And he's got a solution to your problems. So we want you to tune in, listen to the word of God and hear the word of God and receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Receive the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And God will do wonders in your life. God has not forgotten you. You may have forgotten God. You may have turned away from him. You may have been angry. People may have put you down. People may have dished you and kicked you to the curb. But God will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness of the mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. I'm a witness that God can reach down to wherever you are. He reached down to my lowly estate. Pick me up out of the muck and the mire. Pick me up uh, years ago out of drugs and, 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 and adultery and, and, and fornication and lust and uncleanness. Yes, I was there, ladies and gentlemen. He picked me up and turned me around. He breathed the breath of life in me and accepted me in the beloved. Now I'm running for Jesus. I'm running for Jesus. 
I'm running for Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, because everything I have, everything I am, I owe to Jesus Christ. And so for the rest of my life, I dedicated to preaching the gospel and loving people as Christ loves them. And so we just welcome you to the Back to Basics online church where everybody is accepted. We don't close the door on anyone. We're all sinners saved by grace, and we welcome you. If you're not saved, we want you to be saved. We'll teach you how to get saved. If you need healing, we will pray for you. We will teach you the word of God, and we just bless you. We just bless you. We just bless you because we love you, because we serve the God who loves us. And so in a few minutes, we're going to be looking at our sermon. God has given me a message, ladies and gentlemen, to teach you how to get delivered teach you you can get your loved ones delivered you can get yourself delivered no problem ladies and gentlemen if you if you're plagued by alcoholism or drugs or or you're you're obsessed with pornography or you've got something hidden a hidden or secret sin in your life and you can't kick it we will teach you in this message today how to get rid of it, how to get rid of it forever. We're talking to people who want to be free. Or if you've got a loved one who needs to be set free, you can get that loved one set free by the principles of the Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we have this treasure in these earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is of God and not of ourselves. So we give God the glory. We give him the praise. Hallelujah. And so we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We were so blessed, Jackie and I, to be in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania last week. Yes, uh, Dustina, you did not make a mistake when you said Pennsylvania. We were in Pennsylvania, but yet I preached in Wilmington, Delaware last Sunday. And I thank God for Dustina and her family standing in the gap, presenting a word. It was a word of deliverance. Man, little Nathan, man, uh, Big Nate now. We can call him Big Nate now because he's big in the word of God. He preached the word, and Dustina preached the word. They gave their testimony, and people were set free. Praise God. Look at what God is doing in just one family. It, it's not, you can't even imagine what he will do in your household when you trust him. Yes, Dustina says she was afraid, she was shaken, she was nervous, she was scared, but she turned it over to Jesus. She turned it over to Jesus and he fixed it. He fixed it. He would take all of your mistakes and the Holy Spirit would take your mistakes and he will Convert your mistakes into a powerful testimony unto God. So we thank God. We thank God that God is raising up ministers, uh, prophets, apostles, preachers, teachers, witnesses. And I thank God that he's using this ministry. We want to let the church know, the brick-and-mortar church know, we're not trying to compete with you. We're not trying to compete with any pastor, any ministry. We see ourselves as part of the body of Christ, and we're so grateful to be saved, and we're so grateful that God has a calling upon us that we can share the word of God with people all over the world. And we do not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. We humble ourselves. We have the mind of Jesus Christ. And we humble ourselves so that God can use us. God cannot use a proud spirit. So we humble ourselves. And we're not afraid to let the Lord use us. And so we want to encourage you. We want to encourage you. God's got a ministry for all of you. God's got a work for you. So you just trust in the Lord. And when God speaks to you, don't be scared, don't be afraid, because the Holy Spirit lives in us. That river of living waters, a.k.a. the Holy Ghost, lives inside of us. Jesus said, I will send you the Comforter. He will guide you into all truth. And the Holy Spirit is guiding us. He's guiding this ministry. He's guiding Dustina. He's guiding Ryan and Tara, he's guiding Megan, he's guiding uh, Robert Peary, he's guiding all of Jeep in, Jeep in Colorado, he's guiding all of the people, he's 
guiding Zisla in Midlothian, Texas. And so we give God the praise. We give God the glory. So let's get ready to hear the word of God. We're going to ask our friend. And we were blessed to fellowship with this young man and his wife and daughter last week in Pennsylvania. We're going to ask Ryan Trogler to lead us in prayer. Uh, good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Tara. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> okay. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for blessing us with another day. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want you to give uh, thank you for giving Pastor Carter the wisdom and knowledge to spread your word today to this awesome online church. Uh, we want to bless everybody today and have an awesome day in the Lord. And Lord, just put your hands on the sick and heal them and just we just do it all in your name. We glorify you and praise you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan, my friend. Thank you. Praise God. And we give a shout out to Jenna, too. Hey, Jenna, we thank God for this family. And now let's get ready for the word of God. We're uh, ministering today on how you can build a hedge of thorns around a loved one. How you can build a hedge of thorns around a loved one. And you can even apply this to yourself, how you can build a hedge of thorns around yourself if you need to. Listen to this. God says in his word in Ezekiel 22, verse 30, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the nation that I would not destroy it, but I found none. God says he was seeking for a man to stand in the gap before him, to stand in the gap for the nation, to build a hedge around the nation, and he could not find any, and therefore he destroyed Jerusalem. He told Ezekiel, uh, I've got to destroy them because I've sent the word out over and over and over and over again, but they would not listen. I kept seeking for a man. I would send prophet after prophet. They killed my prophets. They destroyed my prophets. And God said, now that's it. That's it. We're at the point of no return. And he let Ezekiel know that Israel would be destroyed. And this had already taken place because Ezekiel was a prophet in captivity in Babylon when God spoke to him. Ezekiel was a prophet in captivity. He was one of the many who were taken away out of Israel because Israel uh, did not obey God. And, and God is speaking to Ezekiel saying, I sought, I sought, I looked, I searched. I try to find somebody to stand in the gap for the nation. God said, I did not want to destroy the nation. I wanted someone to preach my word, to stand before the people and encourage them to repent. But I couldn't find any. All turned, they turned against me. And God said, I had to destroy them. Ladies and gentlemen, God will give warning after warning after warning after warning. God is knocking on households today. He's knocking on hearts today. He said in his word in Second Chronicles 16, 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. God's eyes are looking right now. He's up in Richland, Pennsylvania. He's in Maryville, Pennsylvania. He's in Clarksville, Tennessee. He's in Midlothian, Texas. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking. He's even in Cleveland, Ohio, Robert Peary. And he's looking for somebody who will stand for him. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. God is looking for someone who will say, Here am I, Lord. He searched one day, and he found little Nathan in, in Tennessee. Nathan, only 12 years old. Nathan said, Here am I, Lord. I'll preach your word. I'll go where you send me. I'll tell my classmates about you. And see, God is looking. He's looking. He's looking because God loves you. He does not want to destroy you. He does not want to destroy the nation. He does not want to destroy the nations. God has people in Washington, D.C., who are standing in the gap, 
who are standing in the gaps, who are lifting up the president, who are lifting up the congressman, who are lifting up this nation and its leadership. And God has people in churches, churches where people have turned their backs to God. God has people standing in the gaps. They're crying out to the Lord, Lord, have mercy on us. Open the eyes of the people. Circumcise the foreskin of their hearts. God knows that people's hearts have turned cold against him. Many preachers have turned cold. Many believers have turned cold. And God is knocking on your door. Don't turn your heart against God. Do not harden your heart against God. Receive the word of God. Receive the word of God. Yes, even in this nation, they stone the preachers. They run them out of town. They don't want to hear them. They would rather listen to something goofy on on radio or watch something goofy on TV or play with their cell phones than to hear the word of God. But God is crying out through many people, turn back to me, God says, turn back to me. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in the last days. We're living in the last days, and Satan is pulling out every plug, every stopper to try to prevent you from worshiping God. And one of the ways that he's affecting people today, he's attacking households. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan is attacking marriages. He hates successful marriages. He wants your marriage to be unsuccessful. He wants divorce. He wants husband and wives fighting one against one another. He wants children cursing their parents. He wants parents selling their children for drugs. He wants all evil to break out in the family. And so far, we have this message today. If anybody in your family is acting contrary to the word of God, if your wife is not acting right, if your husband is not acting right, if your children are rebellious, there is a way that you can get them in line with the word of God. Your son might be out there selling drugs. You might be a drug dealer on the side. You might be a, 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 a fornicator on the side. You might be an adulterer, and you can't stop adultery. You can't stop lusting. But there's a way that you can be delivered, and God has made the way possible for you. You can, ladies and gentlemen, you can get your loved ones not only saved, but delivered. A lot of people are getting saved, but a lot are not getting delivered. If there's a habit in your life, if there's something going on in your life that should not be, you can be delivered if your heart is open to God. Because God said, I sought for a man among them who will stand in the gap for me and make up the hedge that I would not destroy. God said, my eyes are looking, running to and fro. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. He's looking for you, ladies and gentlemen. So don't throw your hands up in disgust. Don't throw your hands up in defeat and say, I can't defeat this drug habit. I can't defeat this uh, problem I have with fornication. I can't defeat this problem of homosexuality. I can't destroy this thing, this lesbian thing in me. I can't destroy uh, this uh, gambling habit. I can't stop uh, watching pornography. Yes, you can. You can be delivered. Our God is mighty, and we ought to stop mocking God. We ought to stop grieving the Holy Spirit by saying we can't. We can't. The scripture says you can. Yes, you can. The scripture says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ. I can have a happy marriage. I can love my wife. I can love my husband. I can love my children. I can live honestly. I don't have to steal. I don't have to kill. I don't have to hold up the drugstore. I don't have to murder. I can live. I don't have to uh, be a bigot. I don't have to be a racist. Ladies and gentlemen, there's so much racism in the church. It's pathetic. Racism should not be in the church. Jesus said we're to love one another as, 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 as Christ loved the church. Her husband's to love his wife as Christ loved the church. And the church is to love one another. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no excuse for racism in this nation. There's no excuse for anger, bitterness, jealousy, and envy in the church. Ladies and gentlemen, it's so pathetic. It's pathetic to hear church people say, I hate so-and-so. Or I hear people say, I hate President Trump. Oh, you should not hate President Trump. 
He may not be doing what you want him to do, but God placed him in that office. And if, if you grieve the Holy Spirit, you're grieving the president, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. You need to pray for the president. You need to pray. If he's not saved, pray that he gets saved. Pray that he's surrounded by spiritual advisors. Pray for your congressmen. Pray for the senators. Pray for you. Pray for pastors. Ladies and gentlemen, every pastor in a pulpit is not right. Pray that they get delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, this control spirit, this spirit of manipulation is controlling people. And ladies and gentlemen, let's get it, bring it close to home. Satan has a weapon that he's using against many men, and it's called the unfaithful wife. And Satan has a powerful weapon against unfaithful, against many women, and it's called the unfaithful husband. Ladies and gentlemen, the number of men cheating against their wives and the number of wives cheating against their husbands, this lust spirit, this lust spirit is, is, is very powerful. But it's not all powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got a spouse who's dishonest, you suspect your spouse being dishonest, then you need to apply what you're going to learn today. Apply it and trust God. Apply it. Don't try to take matters into your own hands. No, 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 no. Don't get a gun. Don't get fire. Don't get anything evil. But just trust the word of God. This method works. If you've got a hard-headed child, you've got a stubborn child, rebellious child, this child doesn't do anything you tell him or her to do. There are things you can do to shut that child down. Listen to this. A certain man discovered that his wife was secretly seeing another man. She would meet him on business trips and spend long hours after work with him. For months, she had neglected her home responsibilities, such as making any meals for her husband. He learned about the hedge of thorns that he could claim in prayer for his wife. And one day he used it. I say he learned about the hedge of thorns that he could pray for his wife. And one day he used it. He got bold enough and courageous enough to ask God to build a hedge of thorns around his wife. Ladies and gentlemen, that evening, listen to this, that evening when he got home from work, his wife was in the kitchen making their first meal in four months. The hedge of thorns works, ladies and gentlemen. It works, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this. A wife learned that her husband was spending time with a younger woman. She learned further that he was planning to leave her and marry this younger woman. She was told how to pray a hedge of thorns around her husband. The next evening, he received a phone call from the young woman telling him that she wanted to break off this relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, the hedge of thorns works. It works every time, ladies and gentlemen. It works every time. The wife, listen to this, the wife of a young pastor left him and began working in a bar. She was planning to marry the bartender. The grieving husband learned how to pray for a hedge of thorns around his wife. His heart was broken. He was grieving. He learned how to pray a hedge of thorns around his wife. And three days later, his wife called him up and was ready to return home. These are only a few of the many illustrations which Christians are experiencing as a result of building a hedge of thorns or a hedge of protection around their loved ones. There are many more stories that could be told. The hedge of thorns, ladies and gentlemen, it's scriptural. It's found in scriptural. It's found in Ezekiel uh, 2230. The hedge of thorns is found in uh, Psalm 8012. The hedge of thorns is found in Proverbs 15:19. The hedge of thorns is found in Isaiah 5:5. 5, 5. But we're using for this message today Job chapters 1 and 2, Hosea chapters 1 and 3, and Ezekiel chapters 22, chapter 22, 30 and 31 where you can pray a hedge of protection around your family, around your loved one, even the one that's grieving you,
hurting you the most. A husband can pray a hedge of thorns around his uh, 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 wayward wife. A wife can pray a hedge of thorns around her wayward husband. If you've got children in the household, they're just hard-headed. They're just rebellious. They don't do anything you tell them to do. You can pray a hedge of thorns around them, and they will get back in line. Ladies and gentlemen, the Scripture guarantees what it says, God word, God's word works. It will not return until him void. Now, there might be some of you out there today. You're contemplating divorce. You're, you're thinking about a divorce. You're tired. Your heart's broken. It's been broken over and over and over again. You, 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 you're tired of, uh, of smelling somebody else's perfume in your husband's clothing. You're, you're tired of uh, seeing uh, 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 your wife in a car with someone else. You're just tired. And, 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 and might be somebody out there today. You're threatening to get a gun and blow somebody's brains out. No, no, no. Al contraire. No, the scripture says thou shall not murder. The scripture says thou shall not commit adultery. But commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust in the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Learn this word. Study this word. Apply this word. Trust in the Lord and watch what God will do. It works. It works, ladies and gentlemen. It works. If my son were online today, he would tell, tell you, when he was a teenager, I built a hedge of thorns around him. He asked me one time, Dad, 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 I, I got my eye on this, this certain young lady in school, and, and I, I want to see, I want to I wanna hit on her. And, and Dad, don't be praying a hedge of thorns around me, because I know if you pray a hedge of thorns, I'll never score. Well, I pray the hedge of thorns. And if he were online today, he'd be a witness that the hedge of thorns works. Ladies and gentlemen, you can pray this prayer around yourself if you know that you know that you're not doing right. If you know that you uh, 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 are or wanted to do evil. If you know that you've got a secret sin, even though you're trying to get out of it, you can't do it. You're like Paul says in uh, in uh, Romans chapter seven. The things I want to do, I don't. The things I should do, I do not do. The things that are right, I don't do them. He says there's something in me makes me do wrong. And 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 who shall deliver me from the body of this flesh? Well, the answer is Jesus Christ. He will deliver you. You need to learn how to build a hedge of thorns, even a hedge of thorns around yourself. If you know that you've got a lustful spirit in you, you've got to bind that spirit of lust and then build a hedge of thorns around yourself. Ask God, God, first of all, confess your sins, then bind that lust spirit, and then ask God, God, Build a hedge of thorns around me that I will not be successful in any situation I try to uh, be successful in, in in dealing with another woman or another man. Ladies and gentlemen, when you build that hedge of thorns around yourself, God will protect you. That hedge of thorns, ladies and gentlemen, it's a hedge. It's a living hedge. It has all kinds of briars. You can't get out to do what you want to do, and that person you wanted to do it with cannot get into you. You try to find your drug dealer, and the drug dealer is trying to find you. You can't get out to where the drug dealer is, and the drug dealer cannot get into you. That hedge of thorns works, ladies and gentlemen. It works. If you suspect that your son is selling drugs, ladies and gentlemen, uh, First of all, make sure you repent of your sins, confess your own sins, and then ask God, build a hedge of thorns around my son, around my daughter. If your daughter's hooked on meth or am uh, uh, meth amphetamine or, or drugs, then you build a hedge of thorns around that child. And that, that person will not be able to get those drugs, and the drug dealers cannot get to them. Ladies and gentlemen, once you build that hedge of thorns, you let God have his way. Bind Satan, bind that demonic activity, bind that lustful spirit, bind that spirit of adultery, bind that spirit of fornication, bind that spirit of drugs, bind that spirit of greed, bind that spirit of murder, and, and, and a lot of people in this nation, bind that spirit of racism and hatred and envy and jealousy. Bind that spirit. Whatever that 
adverse behavior is in you or in your family or in your church or in your community, even in your government officials. When you see that adverse negative attitude or behavior, it's a demonic spirit. You can bind that spirit. Then ask God to build a hedge of thorns around that person. I ask God to build a hedge of thorns around our president, that he may be more loving. Stop being mean to people. Stop saying things that are ungodly. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to do that around our senators and representatives. Bind that lying spirit. There's so much lying and deception going on, so much manipulation, so much control. Bind that control spirit. If you know you're dealing with a boss who's a liar, if you know you're dealing with someone who is a, a conniver, you bind that spirit and then ask God to build a hedge of thorns around them. Build a hedge of thorns around your co-workers, around your family members, even around the nation. God said, for I sought for a man among them who will stand in the gap for me, before me for the nation and make up the hedge, but I found none. God said I had to destroy Israel because I could not find anyone who would stand in the gap for the nation. I wonder how many people are standing in the gap for this nation. I wonder how many people are standing in the gap for First Baptist, for Second Pentecostal, for Third Presbyterian. I wonder how many people are standing in the gap for your household. I wonder who's standing in the gap for your marriage. I wonder who's standing in the gap for your children. I wonder, Nathan, how many people are standing in the gap with you for your classmates to be saved. I wonder, Destiny, how many people are standing in the gap for your girlfriend to be healed. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, God's eyes are looking throughout the whole earth seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of, of, of those whose hearts are perfect for him. God is willing to do. He just wants someone to be bold enough to stand in the gap. Ezekiel had to stand in the gap for the captives who were in Babylon, that God would make a hedge around them, that they would not be destroyed in Babylon. When we look at Job, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at Job, the first two chapters, we see that uh, Job was an upright man, a perfect man. He loved the Lord. He sacrificed to the Lord every day. And he had a family. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he had an ungodly wife. Uh, he, had to, he had to pray for them. He had to make sacrifices for them. And then he was so, so uh, godly. He was rich. He had everything. And then Satan came to God. And ladies and gentlemen, Satan can go to God and challenge uh, God based on your relationship with him. A lot of times things happen to you. You don't know why these things are happening. Well, Satan has access to the throne of God. He can challenge God for you and for me. And God often allows us to be tested by the devil. Well, the devil said to God, well, uh, God said, where have you been? Satan said, I've been all around the earth, to and fro on the earth, and I can't find anybody who loves you. He's a liar. The devil's a liar. He, 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 he's always been a liar. He's a father of lies. God said, you're lying. He said, you haven't uh, considered my servant Job. Job is upright. Job will not forsake me. And Satan said, well, you're right, Job, you've got a hedge around Job. That's why you've got a hedge around him. Ladies and gentlemen, this hedge of protection works. You stay in the will of God, God will keep a hedge of protection around you. But when you venture off into sin, you venture off into adultery, you venture off looking at your neighbor's wife, you venture off looking at robbing the convenience store, you uh, venture off into wanting to rob uh, the the, 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 uh, the, the, the mart, then you're in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, sin brings a breach in our umbrella of protection. Sin will bring a breach in our hedge. When we sin and when we don't confess our sins, then Satan can get in. A lot of people are sick today, ladies and gentlemen, because they've sinned against God. Now, I'm not saying all sickness is because of sin, but a lot of sickness is because of unconfessed sins. A lot of cancer is due to bitterness in the spirit. Some people are still angry with others. That spirit of unforgiveness results in 
some cancers in the body, ladies and gentlemen. And so we've got to confess our sins. And if we know that we know that we're not right, we've got to for, ask God to forgive us and do more than that. You've got to turn from sin. Repent means to turn around. And sometimes we've got to ask God, God, I can't stop this gambling. I can't stay out of the casinos. I can't stay out of so-and-so's house. I can't stay out of the drug den. I can't say, God, I want to, but I can't stop it. Then you've got to ask God to build a hedge of thorns around you. Ask God to build that hedge of thorns. Well, Job built the hedge of thorns around his family every day. God told Satan, you can take everything he has, but don't touch his body. Satan immediately went to work, killed all of Job's children, killed all of his animals, took his wealth, took everything Job had. And then Satan went back to Job, back to God, and told God, uh, 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 I've been on the earth. You, you, everybody there is cursing you. And, and God said, no, you're a liar. Job has not cursed me, even though you've taken everything he's had. And then Satan told God, well, you've got a hedge of protection around him. You still have that hedge of thorns around him, skin for skin. Now, if, if you let me touch his body, he'll curse you and die. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan's whole scheme his whole scheme, he has a three-fold ministry to kill, steal, and destroy. His whole scheme is to get you to deny God, to curse God. Many people have denied God and, and have actually cursed him. When you turn your back from the church, when you stop going to church, when you stop worshiping God, when you stop reading your scripture, when you stop praying unto God, when you stop praising, worshiping God, and that's just like cursing God. And so Satan's strategies, ladies and gentlemen, is to rob you, steal your relationship from the Lord, and destroy your relationship with God. Well, God told Satan, you can touch his body, but you better not kill him. And Satan went to work immediately, hit Job with boils from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head with pus and, and sores, running sores. And Job was miserable. He had to take pieces of clay and scrape those sores. He had to bite some of those sores and squeeze the pus out of them. Ladies and gentlemen, he was so miserable. And his, he, he, he even went out, left the house, and sat out on the town dump waiting to die, and he just sat there, and his wife even came up, and his wife, she was so ungodly, she was not a help meet at all. She said, why don't you just curse God and die? You're not as holy as you think you are. Ladies and gentlemen, when a man has an ungodly wife, he's in a fix. When a woman has an ungodly husband, she's in a fix. That is why you children who are listening, you better listen to your mama before you get married. You better listen to your daddy. Uh, if your mama says, don't marry him, I see something in him, you better listen to your mama. Uh, don't say, but he's pretty. He's got money. He's got a, a good job. You better listen to your mama because if you marry the wrong person, that person can take you down can take you down and destroy you. Same thing uh, with you young men. Listen to your parents and stay with the Lord. That, that is one of the problems we have in our society. People get grown and they don't want to hear the Lord. They don't want to hear their parents. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible teaches that uh, rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. Children, when you obey against your parents, you open your heart to the witches and the warlocks, and Satan can destroy you. That is why you need to get saved. You need to repent. And if you know that you're not doing right, repent. Ask God to help you. Then ask God to build a hedge of thorns around you so that you will obey God in everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Job lost everything. Even his friends came and looked at him and said, you must be a secret sinner because God wouldn't put anything on you like that. Well, God didn't put it on him. And ladies and gentlemen, God doesn't put anything on you. Satan puts stuff on you. And so we've got to learn how to build a hedge of thorns even around ourselves, around our loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, Job built a hedge of thorns around his children, around his wife, 
But there is a part that the children and the wife had to play. God is not going to tolerate our sins forever, ladies and gentlemen. And we can stand in the gap for our loved ones, but our loved ones have to call on to God for themselves. Look at uh, Hosea. Chapters 1 and 2 and 3 of Hosea. I won't, don't have time for all three, but all three chapters. But God told Hosea to marry a woman, to marry a woman who was a prostitute. And he married her. She gave him three children. After a couple of years, a few years, she left him and went back out in the streets, left the man of God with three children. He was the laughing stock of the whole community. The church laughed at him. They made ridicule of him. But Habakkuk was a true man of God. He still loved his wife. He loved his children, took care of his children. And then one day God told uh, Hosea, I want you to go and buy your wife. She's on the block. She's being sold on a certain day. I want you to take this. He told jo uh, Hosea what to take and purchase her back. Purchase her back. Bring her home and bring her home. Don't beat her. Don't chastise her. Don't punish her. But love her. Love her. Love her. Love her. Love her. Show her love. Speak kindly to her. Show her love. And ladies and gentlemen, can you see the man of God? Can you see the man of God out on the town square bidding? His wife was a sexual slave. She was being sold in the, in the uh, town square. And he bid on her and purchased her back and took her home and did not beat her, did not punish her, did not humiliate her, did not chastise her, but he spoke kind words to her. He showed her kindness. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the way we need to do when our husbands don't act right, when our wives don't act right. First of all, you confess your sins, and then you bind that spirit of adultery, bind that spirit of fornication, bind that spirit of gambling, bind that spirit of alcoholism, bind that spirit of drugs, bind that demon. The Scripture tells us, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And then after you bind those demons, then ask God, God, build a hedge of thorns around my loved one. Build a hedge of thorns around my loved one and deliver them, save them. And ladies and gentlemen, this works. This works. This works. This works. And in the process, after you bind those spirits and ask God, ask God, to uh, build that hedge of thorns. Make sure that you stay faithful to God. Don't allow sin in your life. Number two, cleanse all sin out of your life. Number three, build that hedge of thorns in prayer. Number four, restore a spirit of oneness. When that person comes back home, when your husband comes back, no matter what he looks like, no matter what he smells like, you love him, love him. That's your husband. You're married in God's sight, and treat that person with kindness, with love, and bind those spirits. Speak the word of God. Begin speaking the word of God. Don't give him a piece of your mind. Give him a piece of the Lord. Give him the word of God. Let the word of God come out of your mouth, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to win that person back by the way you conduct yourself, and Cast down all vain imaginations. Anything that he says or she says that's not of God, you cast down those vain imaginations. How do you cast them down? By the word of God. Meaning if someone says something that is not the word of God, then you say, oh, no, no. The word of God says, and speak gently, the word of God says, a man shall love his wife as Christ loves the church. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how to build a hedge of thorns around a loved one. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Here's a prayer. Here's a prayer that a, a, a mother prayed for her child. Her child was in school hanging out with the wrong people, uh, hanging, out, hanging out after school with the wrong people, doing things that uh, 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 the child was not trained to do raised in the household, and so uh, the mother began praying a prayer of protection, a hedge of thorns around her child. Dear Father, thank you for the blessings you have bestowed upon me. 
You are the protector and the light. In this time of need, my child has been involved with peers who do not share the Christian values that we hold so dear. In your name, Lord Jesus, I pray for a hedge around my child to protect her from these evil forces that are at work. May you bless her and this household and keep us safe in this time of need. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just a sample prayer. That prayer works. That prayer works, ladies and gentlemen. Or pray over your husband or pray over your wife. Pray over your children. Pray over your community. I pray over this government, ladies and gentlemen. I pray for our president. I pray for the leaders. I pray for the church. I pray for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, when you need to build a hedge of thorns around a loved one, do it. You can pray a hedge of thorns around a coworker, around your boss, around your school. You can pray a hedge of thorns around yourself. It works. It's putting your trust in the Word of God. But the key to the whole thing is love. Love covers a multitude of sins. You must operate in love. You can't operate in anger or in bitterness. The Scripture says, if I regard sin in my heart, he won't even hear me. If I'm praying a hedge of thorns around someone and I'm bitter and I'm angry, no, it won't work. You've got to confess the bitterness. You've got to come clean. God, I'm angry. I'm ticked. I am really P.O.'d about what my husband's doing or what my wife is doing. I am ticked at what my child is doing. And, Lord, I, I, I really have thoughts to, to do them in. I, I wish I, I, I really need to. I want to choke him while he's sleeping. I want to pour hot grits and gravy in his face. No, no, I'll contraire. Repent, ladies and gentlemen. Cast down those vain imaginations. Cast down those thoughts that Satan puts in your head and ask God, Lord, God, forgive me of my thoughts. Forgive me of my sinful ways. Lord God, help me to love my family member. And Lord, help me love my president. Help me to love this nation. And Lord, build a hedge of thorns around them and deliver them and cause them to call upon your name and to return unto you. You do that, ladies and gentlemen. You do that. And every time Satan tries to put an evil thought in your mind, cast down that imagination. Now listen, let's be realistic. The moment you pray that hedge of thorns, listen to this. The moment you pray that hedge of thorns, things might get worse in your household. That child might start acting worse. But you pray that hedge of thorns and stand upon the word of God. You look at the scripture, Ezekiel 22:30. I sought for a man among them who will make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the nation or for the family or for the job or for the church, and I found none. You can say, well, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I'm standing. Work your mighty work. And when things start getting worse, because that's how Satan operates, you just stand on the word of God and let the Holy Spirit do the work. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. I'm saying move over and let the Holy Ghost take over. I'm saying move over and let the Holy Ghost take over. Even if things get worse in your household, move over. Let the Holy Ghost take over. You've committed that thing unto the Lord. The scripture says, cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. Well, bless God. Praise God. We've talked about the hedge of thorns today. We're talking about the hedge of thorns today and how you can build a hedge of thorns around a wayward loved one, a loved one caught up in bondage, caught up in sin. And you learn how to wait on the Lord and God will deliver. Wait on the Lord, the scripture says, and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Ladies and gentlemen, once you build that hedge of thorns, don't listen to what your girlfriend says. Don't listen to what your buddies say. When you build that hedge of thorns, you listen to what God has to say. Say, stay before the Lord and trust in the Lord. The songwriter said, I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. Job, Job sat on that city dump and he said, I know that my Redeemer lives and I shall see him standing upon the earth in the latter day. 
I know that my Redeemer lives. So you, praise God, listen to God, listen to God, listen to God. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and worship God. Worship God. Worship God. If you get a bad report about your husband, get a bad report about your church, about your job, about your pastor, about your child, you worship God. You just praise God. Just just start praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Pray 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 in tongues. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Move over and let the Holy Ghost take over. And ladies and gentlemen, after a while, after a while, you'll see when the light breaks through, there's light at the end of the tunnel. When Jesus breaks through, when you learn how to wait patiently on the Lord, you'll see victory. You'll see victory. You'll see deliverance. You'll see a new child. You'll see a new husband. You'll even see a new you. Hallelujah. Job was restored. God gave him more children, gave him another wife restored everything hallelujah because job trusted in the lord he did not trust in his friends he did not trust in their wisdom he trusted in the lord praise god hosea did not trust in what his friends thought what his buddies thought hosea trusted in the lord ladies and gentlemen make your decision i'm gonna trust in the lord fight for your family fight for your loved ones Fight for your church. Fight for your nation. But use the mighty weapons that God has given you. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To those of you listening to this message via YouTube or uh, Facebook or uh, those of you in other nations, fight for your nation. Fight for your government. Fight for your family. Fight for your ma marriage. Fight for yourself. But use the weapons that God has given us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, the Lord says. And the scripture says, greater is he in us than he that's in the world. Hey, this is Pastor Leroy Carter. I'm getting ready to sign off from the official message, but I want you who are still online, stay online. We might have a practicum or some practica. We might have an opportunity to pray for somebody, and I'd like to pray for you. If you need uh, help in building a hedge of thorns around someone or you need help, you need prayer, ladies and gentlemen, then we'll talk about this, and we'll go into prayer, and we'll trust God. So let's stop. All the recording in a moment. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your word. Let your word go forth with power and demonstration in the Holy Spirit. Let signs and wonders and miracles accompany this word. Bring forth miracles in our households, in our marriages, in our family, in our children, in the churches, God, in the nations. And we give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Hallelujah.